It started with a Christmas present that former First Lady Rachel Hodges received from her son. It was a New York City subway map, and all along the lines were names of strong, powerful women, and she was moved by what the author wrote on the map. How could I have imagined myself in my formidable years if I'd moved through a city where many things in public places were named for strong, powerful women? And that just made me think and gave me pause to wonder, what is my city doing to recognize strong, successful women in public spaces? So I began walking around Columbia, looking at street signs, because all the street signs are named for men. And I found one named for a woman, Lady Street, right? Lady Street is named for the very first lady of the United States, Martha Washington. But while they were trying to acknowledge a woman's contributions here in Columbia, they also made her invisible by just not putting her name on there. And with that realization, Hodges founded Columbia City of Women. The purpose of the Columbia City of Women is to identify women from the past and the present, um, tell their stories, celebrate their success, and inspire future generations. And one way to recognize these successes was through a map of the capital city. The Columbia City of Women map, last year we identified and recognized 12 women, and they are placed in different locations on our map. This year, on March 8th, we'll identify eight new women to add to the map giving us a total of 20 women who have done significant things right here in Columbia that we need to talk and share and let everyone know about what they've done to contribute to our community. Women like Majeska Simpkins and Sarah Mae Fleming. On the corner of Maine and Washington is a marker honoring Fleming. We visited with her granddaughter who spoke about her hospitable spirit and heart. She was leaving work one day. She was a maid, a house worker in a predominantly white suburban area here in Columbia, South Carolina. And when she got off from work, she wanted to catch this particular route that would get her home quicker. And when she got on the bus, um, the driver of the bus explained that there were no available seats and there were some available seats in the front. Um, so she took her seat and after asking her to move and she did not, um, he then got up and hit her in the stomach and um, from there sought legal counsel which propelled really the civil rights movement as we know today. Um, her case actually was the blueprint for Rosa Parks and victory came from that because of my grandmother. A few blocks away, Majeska Simpkins is honored with a plaque outside the home where she lived, a place that civil rights activists like Thurgood Marshall would gather. Palmetto Scene host Beryl Dakers explains how Simpkins' activism reached all areas. I think there are very few areas of contemporary social reform that were not touched by Majeska Simpkins. We think about her with civil rights activities for sure. She was very active in the integration of schools through her work with the Richland County Citizens Committee. But she was also an avid mental health reformer. She was very active in prison reform. She was also one of the very first African Americans to be out there picketing for uh, environmental reform. She certainly, during her days prior to joining the NAACP, served as the state director of the Negro Tuberculosis Association, so she was active in public health reform. She's active in women's rights. She was active in governmental reform. She ran for office a couple of times. She didn't ever succeed in winning office, but she certainly raised issues and held politicians' feet to the fire to make them do or be cognizant of those issues which she felt were important to the greater community. And as she would say, she was always the champion of the underdog. Majeska believed in rights, not just for blacks, not for whites, but for everyone. And now, everyone that walks the streets of Columbia can learn about these great women.
We have all these wonderful women who didn't just spring up yesterday, but who have been fighting and struggling to help better our community. What more recognizable and important symbol than to have their names placed at crossroads and things where people will navigate and see and have to become more aware of their accomplishments. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to begin having conversations with young girls and young women and saying, look at these stories of these women and the things that they accomplished. Share these stories and inspire these young women. These can be their sheroes of the future. These are the women that have blazed a trail and offering young women an opportunity to say, look, we did it, you can too. I did, you will.